locked in. Look at what we have here, folks. To the only show that matters. The cream of the crop. Duke loves wrestling. And there is no one that does it better than your host. I have come here to chew bubblegum and kick ass. The Duke. And I'm all out of bubblegum. Hello, subhumans. This is your lord of brutal honesty, the Boston bad boy. And I'm going to take some time out of hanging with my good friends Post Malone and Wale to quickly lay the smack down on all you subhuman candy asses. That's right. See, I've been watching some of these comments online in response to WWE announcing an all-women's pay-per-view, and you simpleton bastards have been out in rare form, let me tell you. You have a problem with women being featured? You don't believe that uh, the women are as good as the men? You hope a pay-per-view fails? What's all the animosity for? Is it because you can't get a girlfriend? Did your mommy not hung you enough when you were younger? Are you afraid that women, rightly so, are going to take over the business and you're concerned it won't stop at just wrestling? Soon, they'll be taking your jobs too. They'll be telling you how to dress. They'll be telling you to wash behind your ears. Maybe put a pair of pants on that fits. Maybe they'll vote. Newsflash, you moron subhuman imbeciles. Anything you can do, a woman can do just as well. And in most of your cases, ten times better. So get used to it, pal. Women rule the world, and women love the Boston bad boy, so I'm not worried. Do you understand that? Because I know what to do. I'm not a subhuman like you. So maybe if you spent less time in your parents' basement eating Hot Pockets and being a keyboard warrior, you'd be able to find a woman that can stand you. Let me give you a little bit of advice. Get out of the house. Interact with real people. Shower before you do, though. Stop being a subhuman. And don't do it just because it's the right thing to do. Do it because your Lord tells you to. That's me, the Boston bad boy. So I got to go hang out with my famous friends. I'm real busy, real friends. And I'll, I'll let you go back to that pointless drivel from the Duke. Jeez. You know, if there's one thing that the Boston bad boy knows how to do, folks, it's put himself over. And while I don't disagree with what he has to say about uh, these male wrestling fans and their reaction to the WWE all-women's pay-per-view, which I'm going to touch upon uh, much later there. I'm going to dig right into that. You better believe it. I got to say, this guy, Boston Bad Boy, oh my God, what a name dropper, what a fool, jeez. Welcome back to Duke Loves Wrestling, the show about pro wrestling and everything else. I am your illustrious host, the Duke, and yes, that was my producer slash co-host slash name dropper, the Boston Bad Boy, who opened the show. As he stated, folks, he is not here in the secret location at this moment. That's because he recorded his comments a little earlier because he is on his way, as he stated, to hang out with Wale, all right, one of the, the better poets slash rappers around today, and also the record-breaking rapper slash singer Post Malone. So, you know, kudos. In Boston Bad Boy, he's a pretty famous guy. He's a pretty big deal. Gets to hang out with all these famous stars. But I got to tell you, folks, if there's one thing that irks me, about the Boston bad boy. And you listeners who've been listening for a while. You know what I'm talking about here. The guy has no common sense when it comes to how to dress. I mean you should have seen this guy today. Okay. He was wearing the stupid boat shoes. Spurries. Which I do like the Spurries. Shout out to Spurry. But he's wearing the stupid boat shoes. With no socks. Now anyone who's been listening to the show for a while. You know that I, I have admonished him about this. In fact let me play a clip from uh, a few shows back where we discussed this whole nonsense with the boat shoes and no socks. Listen to this. But did you notice I'm wearing my brand new Nikes today? Yeah, I don't know. I, I You know, uh, the sneaks. Yeah. I, I go back and forth. I have I have one pair of sneakers. I know people who own like 100. My sure. brother owns 100 yeah, pairs. My boss head. owns 100 pairs of sneakers because there's something wrong with him. Yeah, yeah. Um, but... I have the sneakers, and I should wear them because my, I have a bad ankle. I should wear the sneakers. More comfortable. Sure. Can't do it. I don't find them that look good on you. You wear those stupid boat shoes, and you don't do the thing that I do, which is put the insoles in them, so you just no. look silly. No. In the summertime, when you're wearing shorts, yeah. you wear the boat shoes because you can just throw the, your shoes on and throw them off when you you're on the boat. You don't wear any socks? No. That's disgusting. It's not disgusting. It's disgusting. No, because I have a plan. I have a system. You see, I buy new boat shoes in this fall, right? Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. then I can wear them with socks in the winter because you can't go no sock in the winter. Then summertime comes around, right? And you wear them, 
And they get they get disgusting after a while, sure. but they get disgusting at the end of the summer. You toss them. Now you're back on your system for fall. You get a whole new pair. Yeah. You heard that, folks. I mean, this guy is just completely out of his mind. He wears the boat shoes with no socks, and he thinks that's acceptable. So he's on his way to hang out with Wale, who's a huge wrestling fan, by the way. Shout out to Wale. And also Post Malone. I mean, literally, this guy is setting records on the Billboard charts. He's doing a great job. Shout out to Post Malone. I love his uh, new album here. It's his second album, and he's, he's crushing it. But it's, it's just amazing to me. The Boston Bad Boy is going to show up, hang out with these guys in boat shoes and no socks. It's disgusting. It's ridiculous. He needs to grow up, okay? In fact, we're going to put up a poll, folks. What do you think? Boat shoes and no socks. Is that acceptable or is that ridiculous? And you better say the right thing. I'm going to tell you right now. We put up the poll about the uh, pineapple pizza. Does pineapple belong on pizza? And I have to say, I'm impressed with all of you. You did the right thing. Overwhelmingly, folks decided that, yes, pineapple goes on pizza in certain circumstances, which I can accept. It's fine. I understand. I mean, you're not going to put pineapple on certain types of pizza i get it why would pineapple be on a barbecue chicken pizza for it for example i don't know that doesn't make sense but pineapple on the traditional hawaiian pizza okay pineapple on let's say a black olive and onion pizza i'm with it a little garlic in there come on we can do it right we can do it right so i appreciate you folks doing the right thing with that so i need you to do the right thing about this now boat shoes with or without socks do the right thing folks okay on this edition of the duke gloves wrestling podcast we're going to be going over the top stories in the world of professional wrestling aka run the ropes i'm also going to si- sound off i'm going to sound off and you heard the boston bad boy give his comments already but we're going to talk about this uh, all women's pay-per-view by the wwe which is a great idea but some of you so-called fans your reaction to that I don't know. I don't know. But we're going to touch upon that later. But before we get to any of that, folks, the Boston Bad Boy is not the only one hanging out with the stars. Okay? I'm telling you right now, I'm going to be chilling with Jay-Z and Beyonce. They're going to be in town as well. The Carters. I got my bodyguard. We're going to hang out. Going to have a good time. Going to sing some tunes. Going to dance. Going to rock and roll all night long, Jack. Okay, so I'm letting you know this for this reason. Punks like Roman Reigns, punks like Micah Madrid, punks like Babam from Xbit Gaming. You know who I'm talking to, especially you, Babam from Xbit Gaming. You know the guy challenged me. Okay, we have a match coming up, the biggest gaming tournament in the history of retro gaming. I'm talking about none other than Summer Gamia, okay? It is Babam versus the Duke. The winner has gets the X-Bit World Championship. And I'm going to win. I'm going to tell you right now, okay? We're going to be streaming live for four hours, folks. This is not a joke. This is not a test. This is real deal. It's the day before SummerSlam. You got to go over to Facebook.com slash X-Bit Gaming or you can head over to the Duke Loves Wrestling uh, Facebook fan page. I'll put the information up there. I want you to watch me whoop. I want you to watch me destroy. I want you to watch me embarrass this bomb. You know, he's a ranked gamer. He, he's supposed to be a big shot. And the guy thinks he can beat me. Okay? We're going to be playing pro wrestling games. I'm going to wipe the floor with him. I'm going to take the championship. Then I'm going to go downtown and hang with the real cool crew there. You bet, better believe that, Jack. Okay? In addition, shout out to my friends over at Replay in Alston, Massachusetts. Some of the best retro games on the market. They sell them there. They even sell the new stuff. What's even cooler about this place, they have the stand-up arcade games. You know, I was playing uh, Tekken earlier today and, and practicing I love my fighting games. You know that, Jack. But uh, shout out to my man Brian over there. Replayed. Once again, Austin, Massachusetts. They even will fix your phone. They'll fix your computer. I'm pretty sure they'll fix your head if you're crazy. But bomb you're crazy to think you can beat me. Head over to Replayed. Maybe they'll, they can give you a clue. Because man, Brian and his amazing staff with the great service. Maybe they can give you a clue. Let you know not to mess with the Duke. Okay? 
That's what we're talking about here, folks. This is real deal here. All right. So shout out to the Carters. Shout out to Replayed, Post Malone, Wale, everybody. Boston Bad Boy, please get rid of the Spurries with no socks. It doesn't make any sense. And with that said, run the ropes. It's time to run the ropes. It's when I educate the masses on the top five stories in the world of professional wrestling. Let's go. Folks, Sugar and Spice experiencing some changes. That's right, my good friends Alexa and Brianna, a.k.a. Sugar and Spice. You know, they were two of the top stars in all of Texas pro wrestling on the indies there. Fantastic young ladies, hardworking young ladies, solid wrestlers. Well, they're going through some changes right now, and they're definitely some fantastic changes and some challenges. First and foremost, a fantastic change is Brianna. Congratulations, Bri. She just found out that she is going to be a mom for the first time. How awesome is that? That's right, she's expecting, and uh, I really am excited about this. I think it's fantastic. Hopefully, Uncle Duke, that's me, gets an opportunity to help name the baby. If it's a boy, just call him Duke. That's right. If it's a girl, you can call her Dukia. Huh? How about that? Dukia. I like that one. So we're going to have to uh, see if Brianna will go along with this. Trust me, Brie. It's the best thing that could ever happen. The baby will have the greatest name in the history of names. You can trust the Duke on that one. And as far as her twin sister, Alexa. Well, Lex Express, unfortunately, uh, found out that she has some issues with her neck which is very common for pro wrestlers. It's unfortunate, but, you know, it really is what happens. So she's going to have to take some time off, and I think that's a great idea. I am not upset with that. I think it's fantastic. Take some time off, recharge your batteries, and when you come back, and trust me, folks, she will be back. When you come back, you will be stronger, you'll be faster, you'll be even more hungry, and there's nothing but great things that can happen for Alexa. I'm telling you right now. And that goes for Bree as well. I, I really feel strongly about these two young ladies. They've done a great job on the indie scene. And nothing but high hopes and positivity coming their way in the not too distant future. That's right. Broken Matt Hardy. Has he retired? You know, that's the question on everybody's mind, folks. Uh, if you head over to Matt Hardy's Twitter account, he posted a message, and it was very interesting, okay? This message, he put a lot in there, and folks are speculating that he may have retired. Listen to this. To all that supported me in the independence in Omega, to the fans of Team Extreme, to the Matitude followers, to the outspoken fans who brought me back in 2005. To all the people who backed me when I was reincarnated in pro wrestling. To the Woken Warriors. Thank you. Wow. And there's a picture of Matt in front of the fans. I, I'm telling you the speculation is, is running rampant, folks. Did this guy retire? If that's what this is, then hey, you know, obviously Matt Hardy's a Hall of Famer, just like his brother Jeff. They've revolutionized tag team wrestling. They've had great singles careers as well. But, you know, their stuff as it relates to uh, tables, ladders and chairs and all those types of matches, just really groundbreaking stuff. The stuff that's considered the standard in tag team wrestling today. So shout out to Matt Hardy. If you're retired, brother, I wish you nothing but success. Uh, if you haven't retired, come back so Bray Wyatt can break your face. I want to see that feud done the right way. So I hope you didn't retire because I want to see that feud done the right way. But if you're retired, then hey, cheers to you, brother. Wish you nothing but the best. What is going on with Bailey and Sasha Banks? You see, folks, they, they were on a collision course with each other. Uh, and then suddenly they got back together and now they're just this tag team hugging each other and carrying on. I don't know what the hell is going on. I'm going to be honest with you folks. Okay. Why is this a top story? Because I say it is. 
I'm telling you right now, we're building to something, hopefully. Because if not, WWE writers, you ought to be ashamed of yourself. And I'm talking to my good friend Vincent Kennedy McMahon. I know you listen to Vince. Tell your writers they ought to be ashamed of themselves if they don't know what the hell they're doing with Sasha Banks and Bailey, because that should be a SummerSlam match, the two of them battling it out with one another. Okay? And by the way, why the hell is Naomi not on the card for SummerSlam? Why? I asked you a question. Why? Answer me. Why? Somebody tweeted her and asked her, Naomi, where you been? And she said, in catering. She's been sitting in catering, eating. And I mean, look at her six pack. I'm not saying that she's getting chubby or anything like that. Obviously, that's not the case. Naomi is one of the most fit people on the roster because she works that damn hard. She takes her job that damn seriously. But here's what I want to know. Why the hell? And I apologize for cursing. You know, folks, I try not to do that. But why the hell is Naomi not on the SummerSlam card? Huh? She's not injured. She didn't do anything wrong. Why? What's going on? I want to know right now. I need answers. If there's anybody out there listening who has an answer as to why Naomi's not on the Summer Sam Slam card, I want you to send me a message. Duke Loves Wrestling. You can send it on Twitter, Facebook. You can email Duke Loves Wrestling at gmail.com. Somebody let me know why the glow. Naomi is not on the SummerSlam card because I'm telling you right now it's a travesty it's an embarrassment I can't believe it okay I'm very upset about this by the way she's awesome Naomi is awesome moving on I'm really pissed off about that by the way there's no excuse for not having her on the, on the card I'm trying to move on it but I'm really pissed off about that has Matt Riddle signed with the WWE it sure looks like it. The Evolve champion, Matt Riddle, really the top star in the indies right now since Keith Lee has already been signed. Io Shirai has already been signed. But it looks like Matt Riddle is on the verge of signing with NXT, which is WWE. He just has to pass his, you know, drug testing, what have you. But it looks like a foregone conclusion, folks. And congratulations to Matt. I'm going to keep saying this until I'm blue in the face. All you so-called fans out there who have an issue with indie wrestlers signing with the WWE to make more money and to have less stress on their bodies because they're not doing the latest flippy move or the latest dive. All you so-called fans that have an issue with that you know where you can go. And it sure ain't heaven, my man. How dare you? These wrestlers put their lives on the line. They're trying to make it to the WWE. That's the big time. That's where the money is. That's where the exposure is. Set yourself up, hopefully, for life. You and your family. And for you to have a problem with them, signing with the WWE... Putting themselves in the best position that they could possibly be in for their families. These people have families. And you're going to take issue with that? Huh. Disgraceful. Okay? Shout out to Matt Riddle for doing the right thing. Just like my man, CN, Keith Lee, Asuka, Nakamura. AJ Styles, they all signed with the WWE because they understand you have to put your family first. This is awesome chance. Don't pay the bills. This is awesome chance are not going to be there 20 years from now when you could barely walk and you probably have some CTE issues. You better have some money in the bank, Jack. No pun intended. So I applaud Matt Riddle. For at least making the next step and doing the right thing. Sign with the WWE. Have WrestleMania moments. Have great matches in front of the largest crowds you've ever seen in your life. And most importantly, make some money for yourself, young man. Do it. Do it. Do it. Do it. That's right. Tommaso Ciampa is the biggest heel in the, in the whole world. This guy is amazing. Okay? He looks evil. He looks dangerous. 
He looks crazy. Tommaso Ciampa, the NXT champion, is by far, in terms of character, is putting on some of the best work that you'll see in pro wrestling. It's a fact. What's that? The facts? It's a fact. So why aren't you giving him the respect that he deserves? And when he tells you that he's a role model for your kids, that's a fact. Tore his ACL. Had to get shoulder surgery. All these things he had to go through in life. Setbacks. And yet here he is today, the NXT champion. Successful. And he looks like a million bucks. And you know what the best part about Ciampa is? He's not even working as hard in the ring. Physically. He's working deliberately. You ever notice when, when a guy becomes champion, they don't do all the tricks and nonsense. They, they, they tone it down. They focus on a body part. They, they do more deliberate wrestling. They tell more stories instead of the latest flippy move to get somebody to chant, this is awesome. There's a theme here, folks. I don't know if you noticed. Sick of you. All of you so-called fans. Putting the pressure on these wrestlers to do these death-defying stunts that result in them getting hurt permanently. Look at Mick Foley. could barely walk half the time. Give me a break. Shout out to Ciampa. I like this guy. I root for this guy. Pretty cool. The number one story in the world of professional wrestling is... Brock Lesnar turns on Paul Heyman. Huh. What the hell? Brock, I don't like you. I think we've established this already. I don't like you, Brock. And I know you can beat me up. I still don't like you. I don't really care. I don't like Roman Reigns either. He's the worst. But Brock, you're, you're weighing on my nerves here. You're lucky Samoa Joe's not still on Raw because he'd probably punch you in the mouth. But Brock Lesnar put hands on Paul Heyman. He put hands on Kurt Angle. Brock Lesnar has lost his mind. Which is why my man Daniel Cormier in the UFC is going to destroy him. Because Brock Lesnar doesn't know how to act. You're an ungrateful, no good bastard, Brock Lesnar. That's what you are. The word's in the Bible. I'm, I can use bastard, right? Is that is that a swear? I don't know. We'll put up a poll. We'll see if that's a swear. Brock Lesnar, you're an ungrateful bastard. After all Paul Heyman has done for you. Getting on the mic, speaking for you. Doing deals. Keeping you relevant. Out there so you can make money for yourself and your family. And you're going to put your hands on him? Brock Lesnar? Huh. Okay. Okay. Disgraceful. I'm telling you right now, Brock Lesnar. Roman Reigns can't handle you. And I get that. You're going to crush him, which I love. But Braun Strowman is coming for you, pal. Do you understand what I just said to you? Braun Strowman's coming for you. And then when he's done with you... Bobby Lashley's going to finish you off. Okay? You hear what I'm saying to you, Brock? This is what you've done to yourself. You created this mess. The moment you put your hands on Paul Heyman, you established a fact here that you must pay for your sins, Brock Lesnar. Ungrateful. That's the standard. That's the message you want to send the world. When somebody goes out of their way to do so much for you, to make you relevant for so many years and you put your hands on them? Hmm. You're out of your mind, bro. If you were in front of me right now, I'd tell you to your face. I don't care. Yeah, you'd beat me up. So what? I'd get up and tell you to your face again. Huh? You will pay for your sins, Brock Lesnar. That's a fact. Nobody puts their hands on Paul Heyman and gets away with it. Indeed. Folks, you've heard what I think. Now, what do you think? Do you agree with me? Do you think I'm a jerk? Maybe something in between. Head over to Facebook. Head over to Twitter. Type in Duke Loves Wrestling and let me know. I'm still pissed. Naomi's not on the SummerSlam card. Are you kidding me? Brock Lesnar putting his hands on Paul Heyman. What? Ciampa not getting the respect that he deserves. What is going on in the wrestling world today, folks? I took a week off and I come back and Jesus Christ. It's just a mess. Huh? Huh. Up next, the Duke is going to sound off 
on the WWE All Women's Pay Per View. Stay tuned. Hi, this is Earl Oliver from Sully's Indian Wrestling. This is Raj Geary with WrestlingInc.com. This is Sean Reed, boxing writer and undercover low key wrestling fan. And you're listening to Duke Love Wrestling. Woo! Man, I'm on a roll today, huh? I know some of you are listening, saying, man, Duke, what's going on? You you sound pretty pissed off. Huh, I am. I'm just disappointed in a lot of you fans. In fact, I'm so disappointed, I'm, I, I got to do something to boost my mood here. That's why I'm eating a Tanka bar, okay? Now, if you haven't heard of Tanka bar, T-A-N-K-A, this is a Native American natural food. Buffalo meat with cranberries and pepper. I'm, I'm trying out this spicy pepper. Seven grains of protein, gluten-free, no nitrates, no antibiotics. They don't add any hormones to this stuff. And the best part is just delicious. If you like jerky, like beef jerky, you're going to love this stuff, man. It's buffalo meat, so it's really healthy for you. Shout out to my boys over there and girls over there at Tanka Bar. Great folks. They made sure that the Duke is well-stocked with this stuff. Been eating it, been enjoying it, love it. I like a good snack, you know what I mean? It doesn't have to be a full meal all the time. Sometimes you got a snack in between. I like that. I consume a lot of fluids, but, you know, I need my protein. Tanker bar, good stuff, man. That's right. I told you folks that I was going to sound off on what the Boston bad boy had spoken about earlier. The WWE announced that there's going to be an all-women's pay-per-view, which is just amazing. And they're saying that 50 women from the past and the present will be participating in this thing. I think it's awesome. Unfortunately, it's, it's past due. But it's better to make it work at some point than to never make it work at all. So I think it's great. But what really... Grinds my gears. Shout out to Family Guy, Seth MacFarlane. What really grinds my gears is the fact that you fans, so called, especially you male fans, are taking issue with this all women's pay per view concept. I mean, think about this for a second. You got these guys out here. Oh, Duke, the WWE is only doing this because they want media attention. Newsflash, you fool. Of course they want media attention. They're a business. Everything they do they want attention for. That's the point. It's a publicly traded company. Okay? This is a positive thing. It's a male-dominated sport. And they're going to feature women. They're going to put them on display. They're going to make them the end-all, be-all for one pay-per-view. And you got a problem with that? Come on. Did your mother not hug you enough when you were younger? What's wrong with you? Do you need some help? What, those dating apps aren't helping you out there? You can't find a girlfriend? What's wrong with you? I mean, seriously, come on. Some of the best athletes in the world here are going to compete on this pay-per-view, and you got a problem with that? Well, Duke, the women aren't as good as the men. Hey, bozo. Has the WWE invested in the women as much as they've invested in the men answer my question right now character development tv time shout out to analytical kate she does that uh, raw breakdown project i know that she's put it on hold for a little while there but for there's some good data from the past couple of years where you can see that women don't get equal tv time on wwe television they're not investing as much in the women. In spite of that, the women have managed to excel. Through the help of, of the right fans, the real fans, they forced the WWE to feature the women more. I mean, Jesus, I was there live to see Sasha Banks and Charlotte Flair tear the house down at Hell in a Cell a couple of years ago. They were the featured match, and they did not disappoint. We were on our feet with tears in our eyes. We gave a damn about what was going on in that ring. And it was the best match of the night, by the way. By, by far the best, best match of the night. There was nothing better. 
Charlotte versus Sasha Banks, which they always just tear the house down when they're in the ring together. I can't wait for them to reignite that feud at some point. That's wrestling. Medusa, a.k.a. Alundra Blaze versus Bull Nakano. That's wrestling. Madami Toyota versus The World. That's wrestling. You know how many, you know many five-star matches she's had? Other than Ric Flair, she's the greatest wrestler of all time in my book. Are you kidding me? Toyota, who just retired last November? My God, shout out to you. You got a problem with women being featured? You piece of trash. Are you kidding me? Have you ever seen Alexa Bliss? What she does in there? The woman is barely five feet tall. She calls herself five feet a few. I don't even think she's four eight. She's that small. Tiny. Russell's big. She got Braun Strowman over. Huh? Mixed match challenge. Don't make any mistake about it. She legitimized Braun Strowman. She made him somebody that you could look at and say, well, that person has some dimension to them. They got some layers to him. He's not just a big, bad brute. He's got some layers. He could be interesting. He could be funny. Huh. Alexa did that for him. She made him. You kidding me? Oscar? How many men on the roster can take Oscar? Zero. She destroyed them all. Ronda Rousey? Come on. What are we talking about right now? Huh? Did you see her judo throw Triple H? Do you think that even if he didn't want to be thrown, that he could have stopped that from happening? Come on. Stop it. Kurt Angle. I don't even think he would have a chance against Ronda Rousey. I said it. Brock Lesnar? Give me a break. Soft. Soft. Could not handle Ronda Rousey. Ronda Rousey is legitimately one of the greatest athletes in the history of, of any sport. And as far as combat sports, she's in the top three. Bar none. Facts. All combat sports. That includes Muhammad Ali, by the way. Ronda's up there. And you got a problem with featuring these women? Are you kidding me? What? Have you ever seen Ember Moon? Do you understand that she is literally all that is great about pro wrestling? You got a problem? Carmella. The character development. Have you seen her story? This lady was a Patriots cheerleader. Now she's the SmackDown Women's Champion. She evokes emotion out of everybody. Whether you love her or you hate her. Shout out to my good friend Paul. Her dad. He's a good man. Good friend of mine. She evokes emotion out of you. You know what I love to see? I love to see her, her sister Brie, who's a badass boxer. I'd love to see her come into wrestling. She's a boxer, you know. She can she, kill you. Carmella's no joke, man. She's entertaining. Moonwalk all over your ass. I want to see her featured. In all women's pay-per-view, I'm all for it. Stardom. Hell, TNA has been featuring women for years. Come on. All Japan Pro Wrestling did it years ago. Yeah. I get it. Ring of Honor's trying. Okay. I get it. New England Pro uh New England Pro Wrestling, whatever. The point is this is a great idea. And people are trying to take a dump on it, which is embarrassing. You're showing how sexist you are. Not only can women do what the men can do, they can do it 10 times better. They can give birth. They are the strongest sex. Make no mistake about it, folks. Female pro wrestlers are amazing. And we have some of the best in the WWE right now. And you don't want to see them featured? You have a problem with that? You just want to watch the men in the spandex? I get it. Fine. If that's what you're into, great. I'm not going to knock you for that. But I damn sure are going to knock you for taking issue with the women. They're athletes. They're amazing. They're the best in the world. As the Boston Bad Boys say, put down the hot pockets. Get out of your mom's basement. Get some fresh air. Something's wrong with you. Your disdain for 
females in general is showing with how you're reacting to this concept because some of the arguments that you make do not hold water they're not as good duke they're not as good as the men oh they're just pandering to the media oh this is just pc give me a break this pay-per-view is going to happen it's going to be successful it's going to be awesome I'm all there for it. Shout out to Diva Dirt, by the way. I know they're going to be covering it. I'm all there for it. Notice how I didn't say all in. I don't want to piss off Cody Rose and the Young Bucks. I, WWE already did that. But I'm all there for it. My good friend there from the Monster Factory, the world famous Monster Factory, and I'm talking about the man that makes it all happen, Mr. Danny Cage. He asked the question, will, will there be a men's match featured as a special attraction? It's funny. That was real funny. I'm not against it. I'd watch it. As long as it's two guys who know what they're doing. Two guys who can add something to the pay-per-view. Sure. Special attraction. Treat the guys like they're a special attraction. They've been doing that to the, to the women for over, what, 100 years or so? Huh. Something to think about. Hey, who knows? Maybe. And I know Danny asked that question for the purpose of getting us to think. He's a booker in his own right there, so let's work this out. What is this really going to look like in the future here? I get it. Makes sense. Danny's trained a bunch of women who've gone on to be very successful in the pro wrestling business, so I know he wasn't being silly about it. It was a serious question. Do you put a men's match on that all-women's card as a, as a special attraction feature? You know, Danny Cage of the world-famous Monster Factory is an example of somebody who is forward-thinking. Do we need to add enhancements to this? Is there another way to make even more money on something that's already going to make money? I get it. Makes sense. There's somebody who wants to take a concept and continue to build upon it. That is the complete opposite of you folks who are out there complaining. I just don't understand it, folks. You're a fan of something, so you claim, and yet you trash it at every turn. Why? It's one thing to care about something and want to see it change, but when you were trying to stand in the way of progress, why? Why? An all-women's pay-per-view makes sense. Let's show all these talented folks that exist. So then we can take it to the next level. There should be equal time. I want to see more women's content on Raw and SmackDown. I want to see more women's content when it comes to NXT UK. The Mae Young Classic is awesome. Some of the best wrestling I've ever seen in my life. Are you kidding me? Tessa Blanchard, by the way, you're afraid of Natty. You're afraid of Charlotte Flair. You're afraid of Carmella. I said it. You know, I started a lot of trouble on Twitter, by the way, this week, folks, when I pointed out that Tessa fears those ladies. Fears. That's why she's not in the WWE. She fears them. Pissed people off. Brian Cage stepped in and he pointed out everything I said about Natty was true. Of course it is. Shout out to my buddy, uh, Brian Cage. You owe me a beer, by the way, next time in Mexico, Brian. That's right. Shout out to Natty and Two Paws. I want to see a women's pay-per-view best women in the world beating the hell out of each other why not see that you can hear the sirens folks that's not big pop pump coming out although it could be Hmm. folks we have SummerSlam coming up so you know i gotta do the recap we'll do that next week my man sean reed i gotta get him on he's gotta talk about this brock lesnar he's gotta talk about this ronda rousey stuff I'm going to destroy Babam, Summer Game, yeah. I'm taking that championship. I'm going to take pictures. It's pretty awesome. Can't wait. Don't forget the poll, folks. Boat shoes. Socks or no socks? What do you say? I got to get out of here. You know, I'm a little under the weather. Fighting a cold. I'm hoping to kick it before I have to hang out with Jay-Z and Beyonce. I don't want to give it to them. That would be bad. Duke loves wrestling on Twitter, Facebook, iTunes, YouTube. Give me a, give me a five star review. 
Huh? I know you like this show. Give me a five star review. What do you say? Hit me up on the inbox, DukeLovesWrestling at gmail.com. All your questions. Boston Bad Boy will be back next week, and uh, I'm sure we'll have plenty of stories about hanging out with Wale and Post Malone. Give me a break. Also, my good man, Conrad Thompson, the Alabama Dream. He's going to give us an update on Ric Flair. Can't wait for that. Folks, be kind to yourselves. Be kind to others. It's the Duke signing off. Take it away, Tony Schiavone. This is Tony Schiavone, and we're desperately out of time on Duke Love Wrestling.